Hi, everybody, and welcome to another 10 minute travel. And this time we have Kim Lucy with Viking Cruises, and we're going to talk about something really different and really new. Over to you, Kim. Thank you. Well, today we're going to be talking about cruising a little bit closer to home. We're going to explore in our own backyard the incredible Great Lakes of Ontario and uh, just in the northern part of the United States. So this is something if you're not, if you don't feel like you want to get back on an airplane really soon, uh, we've got this amazing experience to offer right in our beautiful country. And many of us have maybe put Canada on the back burner until this last year. And uh, I know I had, but the more I do research into this incredible part of the world, the more excited I get about what we have to offer ourselves here in this beautiful country. So why are we looking at the Great Lakes? Um, well, because it is closer to home, but also uh, this is an amazing system. It's the largest freshwater ecosystem in the world. Uh, there are, it spans over 750 miles across and has over 10,000 miles of coastline. And there are 3,500 islands. Many of them are not even, are uninhabited. So that makes it really exciting for us because we have an expedition ship that I'm going to show you in a minute that will take us in here. And it allows us to land on some of these uninhabited islands and really explore like we, we were originally explorers. So it's going to be really fun. Uh, we also have five lakes to explore, as you can see here. Now, the Great Lakes have a really interesting history. Also, it's known for amazing flora and fauna, there's a, a, a lot of wildlife, there's a lot of uh, preserves and, uh, and, and natural parks, but it also has an interesting history of shipwrecks. Lake Superior is known as the graveyard of the Great Lakes. Over uh, 30,000 lives lost, 240 shipwrecks are in the Whitefish Point area on Lake Superior. This is where the Edmund Fitzgerald is uh, sitting, as well as many others. There's about 350 shipwrecks just in uh, Lake Superior, and we'll be exploring that as well. Um, one of the first ones was the Griffin that went down in um, eight, uh, 1679 in a storm with 35 crew members uh, lost. It was the very first, very first ship to cruise on the Great Lakes, and it hit a big storm on the way to Green Bay. Then it picked up a bunch of uh, uh, furs, and uh, on its way, on its way home, it um, it also disappeared, and they think. They found it in two different locations, so they're not quite sure. So that's still a mystery. The other one, of course, is the Edmund Fitzgerald that many of us have heard about because of um, Gordon Lightfoot's song. It sank November 10th, 1975. And the cool thing about this one is that with our submarines, we're going to be able to go over top of it, and those who feel like it can get in can go on the submarine and sail over top or float over top of the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. So I think that's going to be very cool. So we have three Great Lake itineraries. Um, we have uh, Niagara and the Great Lakes that travels between Toronto and Milwaukee. And this one goes into uh, the Welland Canal, Niagara Falls, Haley, and then a couple of stops in the US, Michigan, uh, in a couple of places. We have Great Lakes Explorer that goes between Milwaukee and Thunder Bay. And this one spends three days up in Georgian Bay. So we stop in at Killarney, we stop at Little Horn, and we stop at Perry Point. And then we have Undiscovered Great Lakes, which is Thunder Bay to Milwaukee, with stops more focused in the, in the US. Uh, so I'm going to take you through some of the highlights of some of these ports of call, just to maybe uh, pique your interest uh, as well. So one of our first ports uh, and home ports is Toronto. Now, many of us go to Toronto. A lot of us have been there for probably for work. And we don't often stop in Toronto and think of it as a tourist destination. But I've had some fun there uh, when I've had a few extra days when I've been out there on business or going out to visit friends. The CN Tower is cool to see. The Royal Ontario Museum is world renowned. There's, they have their own castle, Castle Loma. And one of, my, one of the most interesting things that I did, and I'm not even a hockey fan, but they have the Hockey Hall of Fame. And that is fascinating. So if you're a true Canadian, you're a hockey fan, you might want to stop there. They do have the Stanley Cup, and it's great fun. And also the Toronto Zoo is something that's really well renowned. And then you've got the beautiful lakeside, not to mention the very interesting little ethnic communities that you can enjoy great food and music as you're there. Now we will be traveling through the Welland Canals. Our ship has been built specifically a little bit longer, a little bit thinner than most expedition ships. So it allows us to travel through the Welland Canal. Now I want, to, I want you to think about the Great Lakes experience. I know it's a, an expedition product, 
But a lot of people, I don't want people to be scared off that they have to be ultra, ultra uh, active. In this case, it's more of a combination of our European river cruises and a little bit of expedition. So it's a perfect cruise for those of you who want a little bit of exercise or interested in history, but also want to see some of the incredible scenery that you can't get to with a regular ship. So we go through the Welland Canal that was opened in 1824, and it connects New York City to New Orleans via the Erie, Illinois, and Michigan canals. So fantastic thing to, to go through, as you can see, and it takes us into uh, Niagara Falls. Now, Niagara Falls, of course, is breathtaking. For those who've been, I certainly have. I remember going the first time and just being wowed and thinking, you know, this is amazing. We went out on the, the, the Lady of the Mist and in behind the falls. Uh, and, you know, Niagara Falls itself is a bit like Coney Island. Um, it was a premier honeymoon destination and probably still is. Uh, there's two sides of the falls, the American side and the, and the Canadian side. Um, it apparently uh, dates back about uh, 12,000 years. It, the Horseshoe Falls that we're looking at right there is 170 feet high, and it's approximately 2,500 feet from side to side. It's quite amazing. Now, of course, it has a history of people going over the falls, and the last one to go over was a seven-year-old boy in 1964 who, uh, who actually uh, was the only one to go over the falls without any protection and survive. So I think he was so light that he kind of crested over it, whereas a lot of people have tried to go over in barrels and various other contraptions and haven't made it. Now, in the area, you can also go in and explore Niagara Lake, which is a great, uh, a great theater, as well as amazing uh, wineries. And we also have a helicopter fly over uh, the falls as well. And then we're going down into Port Haley. It's a national park right down in the southernmost tip of Ontario. Uh, it's really the, I think, the, the southernmost point of, um, of Canada into the United States as well. Haley is the French word for bald, and this is a bird sanctuary. It is a peninsula of land that's mostly marsh and woodland habitat, and we are going to be able to get off on our, on our zodiacs and our ribs and uh, actually land right on the point. We won't have to drive in as most people do. So that's another advantage of our ship and some of the, the, the fun toys that we have on board. But here you'll see incredible migratory flocks of birds coming in through the spring. You've got the, uh, the monarch butterflies that come through in the fall, waves and waves and waves of them as they migrate down to South America. Uh, it's really quite amazing to see. And then we go up into Georgia Bay and there are some 30,000 islands here that create a, a UNESCO biosphere reserve. And here you've got sandy beaches on the southern part. You've got the, rock, the rocky, rugged bedrock and the white pines that you see a little bit there. Can you just imagine yourself out there either in a, in a, a zodiac or if you're more adventurous in a kayak, uh, being able to um, uh, work along the, the uh, shoreline. You can also go hiking on the Bruce Trail along the Niagara Escarpment. And here you'll find uh, this is the best area for preserved shipwrecks that I mentioned, 19th century lighthouses, and you've got some really amazing uh, flower pot islands, um, stacked rock formations. So we'll spend three days up here. Uh, you can, we are, we're planning some trips to take you in to learn about the cranberry farms, uh, to, to meet with some of the indigenous communities here, the Anishinaabe, uh, and maybe even do, do a beanie workshop. We've got a lot of really cool things planned for people that are kind of interested. And then there's Thunder Bay. Now I have to say, when they told me we were going to Thunder Bay, I was not really excited. But um, I have to say, looking at some of the pictures and doing some of uh, the research, uh, there's amazing scenery. You can see the, the, um, the waterfall. There's incredible hiking here. Also, they've redone the entire waterfront. So apparently, it's quite quaint and interesting. And you absolutely have to, while you're there, you have to stop and have a Persian bun. Uh, this is world famous here in. Um, in Thunder Bay, and it has a really interesting history. It dates back to the 1940s when Art Bennett, who was the original founder of the Bennett Bakery, it's now called Art Bennett's, um, he was creating this sweet treat. Now you're wondering what it is. It's a deep fried cinnamon bun with cherry icing, which sounds like it would go directly to my hips and not pass go. But it was uh, a gentleman came in, his name was Blackjack Pershing. He was an American World War I general who apparently was visiting the bakery at the time. So as a result of the meeting, uh, the the uh, Art Bennett named this the Persian bun. So 
you can uh, you can check that out while you're in Thunder Bay. Um, and then, oops, I'm going to quickly go back. We also stop in the Apostle Islands. They are known for the there's 21 islands and 12 miles of mainland coast here, and this is filled with um, uh, uh, national park with towers, 240 species of birds. So for bird watchers, you're going to love this. And then, of course, you've got these caves that are carved out of the waves and the cycles of freezing and thawing to create these incredible limestone structures. So we'll be able to go out through with our ribs, with our um, zodiacs, and also with kayaks. Can you imagine yourself going through some of these and enjoying some of this view? It's just incredible. And then Mackinac Island is a four mile, isle, a mile island that has undergone extensive renovations and preservation. It has a 1812 uh, fort that's a uh, recreation. It's been rebuilt and it's open now. So you can, you can see what it was like to live way back in 1812. It also has the Grand Hotel, which is famous for its 660 foot long front porch. And it's also a place where six different presidents have vacationed over the centuries. So I think people uh, will enjoy this. There's no cars on this island. You can only go by foot, by bicycle, or by horse and cart. And we do one of our tours by horse and cart. Our last stop is in Detroit. In Detroit, a lot of people think of it as Motor City. It's maybe not that attractive, but it really has a huge history. Detroit uh, has got a lot to offer when it's on the lake. It's beautiful. It has an art and architecture uh, area that's quite breathtaking uh, to walk through. And we'll be doing some tours there. It also has the Henry Ford Museum of Innovation. So you can see here, you can see some of it. You can see the limousine that uh, JFK was riding in during when he was assassinated. You've got Thomas Edison's entire uh, laboratory recreated here. So let me quickly show you some of what the ship looks like, just to give you a sense. This is a small ship. It's only uh, 378 passengers, has lots of outdoor deck space, it's beautiful inside. We've got our Expedition Central where you can come and meet with our scientists and our experts. We actually can have a working laboratory on board. We're working with the Department of Ornithology from Cornell, uh, the Robert Scott Foundation, We've got the beautiful Finza Terrace and the Aula. The Aula is our theater with that screen that goes up into the uh, up into the ceiling and it looks out over the Finza Terrace. So if things are happening in real time, you'll be able to listen to our experts tell you all about them. In addition to that, we're going to be um, live streaming um, uh, photography from our submarine as well. So the guests will be able to, if they don't want to go down, they'll be able to still live vicariously. And then we have our beautiful state rooms with our Nordic bal balcony, which the top part slides down and opens up to, uh, to fresh air. So here are some of our partnerships, as I mentioned, uh, the Robert Scott Foundation, our Research Institute, the Department of Cornell. The, all of these are super excited to be on board because it's a ship that's big enough that they can do the research, but small enough to get into places they haven't been able to get into. So if you're a bird watcher, you're gonna love this area. Here are some of our toys. We have our Zodiacs. We have our fleet of two-seater kayaks now. These can be paddled, but if you're really lazy, you could just paddle them with your feet and take pictures, which is what I need because my husband's always taking pictures and I feel like I'm the only one paddling. And then we have two six-seater submarines. These are complimentary for our guests to use. They'll obviously have an operator, but should be able to go down and enjoy that. And we also have two-seater convertible ribs, which are, they have um, roofs and sides if it's cool, but we can launch these from the interior of our ship. So if you're not as agile, you're able to get on inside the ship, launch like a boat launch, and then they'll pull you back up and you can get off inside the ship. Over to you. Well, that's fantastic, Kim. I've learned so much with this presentation. Thank you so much, Kim, for another wonderful presentation on behalf of Viking Cruises.